What's up, Loggy Pilots? Loggy Poncho here, and uh, I just figured I'd take a little break from what I'm doing and uh, make a vlog. What I'm doing right now is I'm rearranging all the furniture in my apartment. It's always, well, not the whole thing, just two rooms. Uh, basically, I'm switching my bedroom and my den. I'm taking all the furniture from one and putting it in the other, and vice versa. Uh, it just seems like a good idea because I had all this furniture in the smaller room and I had less furniture in the big room. So I figure I switch them around and get a better use of space. And uh, in the process I actually sparked a new idea for how to, re how to put the furniture into the, into the two rooms. I have like a double wide desk now. So you're, what you're seeing is the room that used to be my bedroom and halfway still is because the AMO is still here. Uh, it's not going to be my den sort of gaming room. I don't know. I don't know what to call it anymore. It's, it's gonna be the den, I guess. I'm just gonna keep calling it the den. I gotta move the bookshelves in. I gotta move that piano out of here. All the rest of this stuff. This invisible, the invisible piano here. Um, yeah. So lots of stuff has been happening in my life lately. It's been, it's been busy. Basically, things in my job are going better. I'm going to a, a new project where I'm going to be doing doing some Java work, and it's uh, it's looking like it's going to be something that I'm going to really enjoy working on. It's going to be a couple of web pages, and then if it turns out going the way I hope it does, it'll be a whole lot of Java, uh, even more than way beyond just web pages. So that should be rewarding and a good use of my skills. Speaking of using my skills, uh, I've mentioned maybe once or twice before on this vlog a website called Project Euler as in Euler the Mathematician. Uh, it's a website that has a whole series of problems to solve and the problems are related to math and computer science and you basically need a knowledge of programming and a knowledge of mathematics in order to solve them. So it's perfect for me double majoring in math and CS. Uh, they're like tailored for me to crack my brain on them. And They've been really satisfying, and I started doing them back in August. I, I may have mentioned when I began what my goal was. My goal was to solve the first 100 problems consecutive, because there's like 450 problems on there, and they get harder as you go along. So I wanted to solve the first 100 in a row. And last week, I reached that goal, solved my 100th problem. It was a problem that solved Sudoku puzzles. Uh, one I'd done before, but I did it even better this time. And it was, it was so satisfying because I, I reached a goal that I made, I guess, like eight months ago. I trucked along. I, I stuck with it. Even during the hard times, I did like one or two a month. And I managed to get a hundred of them done in eight months. And it was challenging and satisfying. It was basically a replacement for the fact that I was no longer in college. And I needed to keep my math and computer science skills sharp. And this did that for me. And for these 100 problems, I did them all myself except for maybe two or three where I got kind of a hint online. Like one of them, it was a recurrence equation, a recurrence equation that helped uh, you get the solution set to be a lot smaller, speed the program up. And then another one, I kind of cheated. I went outside the lines a little bit. The program is supposed to run in a minute. Mine runs in about a day and generates a file. And then if you run it with the files already there, it takes less than a minute. So it has, it has to be like initial processing first. But anyway, so I reached that goal, which was really awesome and really satisfying. And I'm going to keep going. My goal now is going to be to do the 100 most solved problems, which I only have like 10 of those left. It turns out like the first 100 are pretty much the easiest. Uh, although once I got up to like 60 or 70, they all, they all were challenging from then on. Like there were no easy ones beyond that. Maybe the first 25 were like 30 minute problems, but beyond that, it took me a day for each one, just cranking through. Oh, I probably have written, I need to write a program actually to go back through and count how many lines of code I wrote <laughs> for this, because it's got to be a lot. I'd say an average of probably more than 100, somewhere between 100 and 400 on average. So that's at least 10,000 lines of code, maybe up to like 50,000. I mean, it could be even more than that if I'm underestimating all the different files I created. Uh, so it's been a huge endeavor and it's been so rewarding. I'm glad that that's uh, on my mental resume now. 
I could probably even put it on my actual resume because it's something that very few people have done. I'm in a group that's now less than 1% of the people who join the site make it this far. So I'm, I'm officially like in the top 1% of people on the site, which makes me feel like I'm in the position I should be uh, for how much knowledge I have on the topic. Uh, I'm, I'm living up to my expectations of myself. That's always a good feeling. Uh, to know that you can do it and then to do it. That's, what, that's why I find bowling satisfying uh, when I do well. It's because for me, bowling is 100% a mental game. Well, not 100, but very close, like 98% a mental game. It's all about how well I can focus on the different steps that I need to do and the, the follow-through and the release. It's all mental for me to focus on all the things I have to remember to do and to not do uh, as I approach the, the, the lane. And so when I think about like a, a funny spare where I have just two pins on the side or you know something that I'm going to try and do something a little different, I make a plan for the shot and I visualize it in my head. And then when I walk up and I'm able to do exactly what I was trying to do, it's so satisfying to live up to, your, to, live up to, that, to that potential that you had imagined. And that's where I, that's where I am on Project Dolly right now. So I'm setting a new goal. I'm going to truck on and keep going farther because I know I can do the 100 most commonly solved problems because I've already done like 80 or 90 of them because they're sequentially pretty much in that order already. But once that's done, I'll, I'll post another harder goal for myself, maybe like 50 more in a row after that. Or maybe I'll make a... There's like ribbons on the site for solving certain numbered problems. Maybe I'll go for one of those. Or maybe I'll start really pushing myself and try and get one of the hard ribbons, like be in the first 100 people to solve a new problem when it gets posted. They tend to go pretty quick, so you have to be waiting for it to come out, and as soon as it does, you start cranking on it and try and solve it before, you know, 99 other people. So that's Project Euler, and yeah, uh, I never really finished what I was saying about reorganizing, I guess. It's like halfway done. So this will be the new background, uh, partially, for the vlogs now. This is probably going to look a little different. This stuff here will be gone. Uh, but this desk situation that I'm working on now, you might think with how much space there is behind me that this computer is up against the wall. It's not. It's got maybe two and a half feet behind the desk, behind the camera here. And I have basically my desk in front of a big folding table. And on top of the folding table, I put my printer and my router back over there. And my desk now has twice as much room available on it. And... I'm going to put another, I'm, I got a second computer that I'm going to put the stuff for on that desk, sort of behind there. I, can, I have room underneath the table for two of the towers, and I got an extra power strip going around the wall. It's just, oh, I love the technology. I love being surrounded by technology. It's such a good feeling. I'm going to put the couch over here because the TV is right there. So there's like an open space over here where I'm going to put the rug. And, uh, It'll be like sort of like the viewing area because the two seats on the couch and this chair will all be able to see the TV. So I'll be able to have a few people over and we'll all be able to watch television at once or a movie or play Xbox or whatever. And, uh, and I'll still have room for two different computers over here. Probably wondering what the second computer is for. Uh, my father recently, he had a computer that had Windows XP. And if you haven't heard, that operating system is no longer supported by Windows uh, or Microsoft. And... Uh, like, it's officially old, basically. So he got himself a new computer with Windows 7, and he gave me his old computer with uh, Windows XP. It's a, like, really old computer. I mean, that's, it's not ancient. It's, it's old for a computer, but it's probably, I guess, XP. That would have been, like, 10-year-old, 12-year-old computer. It's got, actually, a pretty decent power in it. He upgraded it a couple times, and the, the hard drive is big enough. That I think what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to... I have some files on there from back in high school that I'm going to dig through. I'll put those on my new machine. And then I'm going to swipe the whole thing clean and install Linux on it. And I'm going to turn it into a Minecraft server. Basically have that machine on all the time. Uh, just humming away without even like a monitor or a keyboard attached to it. Just being a Minecraft server. And, uh... Oh, man. I haven't decided the, the breadth of which... Uh, I will be opening that server. Uh, I know it'll be, for me, my friends, you know, BC will be on there, and uh, other people I, I meet around, anybody else I know who has Minecraft. And I also think that I'm going to extend invitations to some of my subscribers, if not all of you. I'm not sure yet how much power I'll be able to get on there. And I remember from the first time that I hosted a server, or actually, uh, Oh gosh, what was her name? She, uh, Kelf. 
Carl Fumazol, who was so helpful in hosting the first uh, Perch server, or the first pilot server, before the Perch even. Uh, we had like moderators and admins and such, and it was like a whole big deal. If I ever opened up this server to everybody, it would just be an anarchy server. There would be no moderators. There would be a, like a couple basic rules that I would probably enforce with a couple bucket plugins. Uh, but other than that, it would be pretty much total anarchy, just because I'm not going to have the time or energy to moderate it. I mean, maybe if the pilots community is, is big enough and uh, motivated enough, we could get a moderation team together and just not even have like a really official just like 20 or 30 people have mod status and if one of them's on they can just do mod stuff I don't know I, I kinda like an anarchy idea better because then I can I can build something really cool and show it in a video and then if I accidentally show the coordinates everyone will go and destroy it <laughs> which I think that could be fun I think that could be fun or maybe you guys wouldn't destroy it maybe you'd go into my house and like put cat faces everywhere or something you know Something like, or fill it with pigs. That was what people always did on the other server I was on. Uh, that always cracked me up. I'd, I'd log in and it would just be a cacophonous, just a, a roaring din of oinking. <laughs> pigs! So that, that's another thing that I'm working on that's kind of got me in a good mood right now. And uh, another reason I'm so uh, happy today is that I, I just got back from a vacation. Uh, I kind of skipped out early on work on Friday. I drove down to South Georgia to visit my, with my family, and that was that was fun. Uh, my it turned out my grandparents were visiting from out of state, and so the opportunity to visit with them because they're normally like, okay, I, I have to fly. They're way too far away to visit by driving, at least for me. Uh, so the opportunity to visit them and my parents at the same time was like perfect. So I went down there on like a day's notice, which normally it's like a four-hour drive, so I would have to like plan it in advance. But I was just like, forget it, I'm going. And I went the next day. Uh, and I visited with them, and it was nice, you know, just seeing them. It's always good to hang out with your family. I hung with my younger brother, who's really cool. Uh, he's about to graduate high school. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I gotta remember to bring that tie to him. I gotta bring him a tie for his graduation. But uh, anyway, I'm getting a little bit off topic here. Yeah, so I went and visited them for a day and a half, and then I drove back over to UGA and visited with uh, my buds over there. And I ended up, like... I just went totally off the rails. Like I had been there for like a day and a half, and it was like all of a sudden I had the flu. I went from feeling totally fine to feeling absolutely terrible. Like I had indigestion. I was like hot, and then I was cold, and I was like I had like a I felt like I had a fever. But when I got back here, I I checked myself, and I was only like 99. I was like that's I mean that's not really a fever, but I just I felt terrible. I was probably dehydrated. I didn't get much sleep the night before, and it just it was like all of a sudden all these things hit me at once and I was like halfway through a meal I put down my food and I was like, okay, oof. And I just I kind of swung back and then went back into it and was like, all right, I'm going to get out of here. Because there was going to be a really big party that night and I was like, I'm official in, in, in like party pooper status stuff here. I'm going to just check out and, rather than being a, a bummer. Uh, so I came back here a, a day early, which ended up being okay because I spent the whole day today moving furniture around, which I hadn't planned on doing. So, uh getting stuff done. Oh, that reminds me. I have a whole new big plan for how to improve my life. And I think that's something that you guys could try too. I have this issue. It's a, it's a chronic bad habit of mine where if I have a, an open flat surface in my apartment, it will accumulate junk over time. And I really hate it. Basically, it gets to the point where if I don't clean the flat surfaces, like particularly look, looking for them, for like a month, I get so much junk all over the place that I can't find like where the newest mail is. And I'll lose like a, like a CD case inside stuff. It's just, it's not even that I have that much junk. It's just that it piles up gradually and then eventually gets to be a little bit annoying. Uh, and I think that having those piles of junk is a way for me subconsciously to kind of just lose things that I don't want to think about. You know, things like... Oh, I have mail I should go through. I'll put that in a pile and like I never go through it. It's like it's nothing really exciting because like I pay all my bills online, so they're not coming in the mail. But like I'm I'm missing out on some stuff, I'm sure. Like I probably have gotten like a few credit card applications that I've just thrown out and or tried to shred everything. But uh Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sort of try and live a more Spartan existence. I'm gonna clear off all the flat surfaces. Uh, and have only the required items out on the surfaces. 
and everything else I'm going to put away somewhere. Uh, basically, what I'm hoping this will do is that by really, really organizing my desk and my computer table, or whatever this table behind me is going to be, or behind you is going to be called, and my bathroom counter, my kitchen counter, and my dining room table, all those are flat surfaces that accumulate junk, particularly the kitchen counters uh, and the desk. So if I clear those off and I keep them clear, enforcing that organization will help me stay on top of things. I'm, I almost, I'm in a bad habit, this is related, uh, of not cleaning my dishes often enough. Like I, the, the, dish, the dishwasher I can do, but the stuff that I have to do by, uh, by hand ends up piling up until I have a bunch of dirty dishes everywhere. And that won't happen if I'm keeping my counters clear, so there's nowhere to put them. They go in the sink, they get cleaned, and they go back underneath. Uh, same thing for stuff on my desk. If I've got papers that I need to deal with, they can be there, and I need to deal with them and then put them away. You know, I don't want things to be piling up. And this also sort of ties in with the second thing, so clearing flat surfaces, and also just getting shit done. Uh, I've been a chronic procrastinator my entire life. Well, I mean, not my whole life. I waited for a while. I waited as long as I could before I started procrastinating. Anyway, like maybe high school, I really started into it because from like middle school and earlier, homework for me was so easy that I did it before I even got off the school bus on the way home. So that was something I just always had done practically before I even started. It was middle school, so no challenge for me. It's also easy. Because uh, me, I'm so freaking bright, you know, I'm just so smart. <laughs> Uh, but then when I got to high school, it's like, I now I'm getting projects that are assigned more farther in advance, and I have things that go for the whole semester long, and I was always a terrible procrastinator on those things. I would wait, not until the last minute, but if I had like three weeks to do a project, I'd probably do it in the last week or the last four or five days. I, would, I wouldn't start for at least half of the time or more, and uh, I'm still kind of that way about, about some things. Uh, it's easy for me to just lose track of time and be like, oh, wow. It's been a week, and I still haven't done that. Like, oh, it's been on my to-do list forever. Like, I have items on my to-do list that have been there since I started working. Like, make a dentist appointment. Make a doctor's appointment. Still haven't done either of those. It's been like eight months. I mean, and I'm not sick. I brush my teeth, so like, neither one of them is really a priority that needs to happen right away. But I should do them, and I just don't. They just, they just get procrastinated off forever. And I think that if I'm clearing flat surfaces and I'm keeping my... Uh, my head on top of things, I'll go for those chores. I've talked about on this vlog before, I think, how I'll substitute in a less painful chore for a more painful one. Like, if I had to do something I really hated, like, uh, I don't like doing the dishes much. It's like, if I really just did not want to do the dishes, I might go and, like, clean out my desk instead. It's like, I like going through my knickknacks, but it's still a chore, so I still feel like I'm working and getting stuff done. Really, I'm just procrastinating not doing the dishes. So if I have the dishes done and my desk is already clean and I get that feeling like I, need, I really need to get something done, I'm going to do something that's actually good, like making a doctor's appointment or whatever. Basically by making sure that all of my little routine chores are taken care of immediately, the only chores I have left are the ones that I would otherwise try to avoid. And so I get, I get stuff done that I would normally put off forever. That's the hope at least. I'm also going to redouble my efforts to eat a good, uh, low-fat diet. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm not really feeling the idea of eating uh, a really low-calorie diet because I'm a 22-year-old guy and I, I want to eat. Uh, I don't want to be, I, mean, I, I could see myself as someone who didn't eat a whole lot of food and just kind of, you know, small lunch, small breakfast, that kind of thing. But I don't, I don't see that really happening, partly because there's so many opportunities to eat lots of food that I would have a hard time saying no to. For breakfast, it's easy, but for lunch and dinner, it's kind of hard to avoid a lot of calories without really, I think, cutting back on my own enjoyment of uh, food. Like, I like to go out to lunch uh, with my buddies at work, and I've already cut that down to just two days a week. The other three, I bring something, usually like a... 500 calorie meal. I bring a, a ham and cheese sand or turkey and cheese sandwich. It's low in fat. Turkey's better for you than ham by a little. Um, or I'll bring some mac and beef. I can heat up in the microwave. Either of those is a good lunch. Uh, and the other two days a week, I'll go out. It was I was going out almost every day, which is expensive and bad for you. 
So I'm saving money, and I'm eating less, but I don't ever see myself eating a really strict, low-calorie diet just because I can't stand being hungry. Like, when I'm hungry, I'm going to eat something. And I like to have that feeling of being full after I eat, which is a, a kind of an American thing, I think. When we eat, we, we have like a buffet, free refills kind of culture. And as much as I love that culture, and I love not having to deal with the things that, the, the other alternatives, uh, it is kind of bad, and it makes us fat uh, if we don't exercise, but most of us don't. So what I'm going to do is, I've kind of figured out that the way that I'm eating now, or the way that I was eating when I was eating out every day of the week, I'm actually hovering at about the same weight. Uh, and so if I can eat just a slightly healthier diet by cutting out fat wherever possible, and then I can start lifting weights, which I've already done a couple times. And I missed my workout because I was on vacation, so I'll go back into it tomorrow. Uh, if I can start working out and eating just a little bit less, the two of those together over time will gradually improve my physical fitness. Uh, my goal is to start lifting more and more weights to the point uh, at, in, the, in the mini gym at my apartment complex, to the point where I feel confident enough to go back to the actual gym and like, basically, I don't want to be so wimpy <laughs> that I feel bad making people wait when I'm using a machine, you know? <laughs> like, when I get to the point where I'm not embarrassed to be there, uh, once I get to that, going to the gym will be a little easier, and I'll be able to get in, in like a really good workout with free weights and stuff, because this has, this mini gym has, has crappy little machines. Uh, and that'll also help me with my weight loss goal, because I think that just the lifting is gonna sort of improve the proportions. So that's all good. And I think that that's going to be made easier by living in like a, a cleaner, a simpler, simplify, 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 Spartan lifestyle. It, it eliminates distractions. And I think that it's also going to help me be more productive in general. Uh, trying to avoid just sitting watching Netflix all the time and get other things done instead. Uh, my buddy in, in Athens that I was uh, with a couple, I was with a couple, a few guys, one of them, introduced me to this thing called the uh, the X, XX Challenge or something like that. I forget the exact name. But basically, you make a, a calendar of the next seven weeks. So it's seven by seven. And you have, you can make one for every goal that you have, uh, like daily goals. Like uh, clean the kitchen would be a good one for me. Uh, and then every day that you do that, you mark it off with an X. And the goal is to get all X's for all 49 days. Basically, it's the next 50 days. And uh, you make one of those for each goal that you have. And then every day at the end of the day, you make a mark for how, how that goal went that day. You, you either put an X to say you did it, or you put a circle and a reason why you didn't. I want to do that. I need to figure out maybe four or five good daily goals. I think clean the kitchen is already a good idea. Basically, to get that one X'd out, I would need to have everything, if not back in the cabinets, at least washed and sitting out to dry. Uh, and then maybe, I don't know what other daily goals would be good. I could probably make a few up and then just stick them somewhere around here and just check those off every day. And then after you know, so many weeks you can look and see you know, how well you're actually keeping up with things and whether it's happening the way that you really, uh, really want it to. And it can give you a, a, a real good perspective on how well you're actually sticking to your goals. Like if you're on a weight loss diet uh, and you're actually, you have like a cheat day every now and then, you might not realize it that you're having a cheat day like twice a week <laughs> and it's kind of ruining your diet. So, but if you were to mark this down and keep track of it, you sort of realize, like, man, this month I had 10 cheat days, but, like, I'm not even on a diet with that many. It's like, so you, you kind of can look back and get a, a more distant perspective on your, your long-term goals that you have to maintain every day. Like, going to the gym would be another good one, because when you skip a workout, it's really easy to skip the next workout and just fall right out of the habit and never go back. But if you had a calendar, it would be like X, 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 X. Oh, God, now it's not happening anymore. And like you have to get back into there and keep marking those down. So I'm, I'm going to try that. Going to the gym sounds like another good one. Clean the kitchen, going to the gym, stuff like that. Good goals. This is going to be a long video, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, this was, this was a good vlog. I had a lot to talk about. 
I, I've made a I've made a point now that I don't apologize for not updating very often because my urge to vlog waxes and wanes with the season. I, I've I have no explanation for it. It does, it's not proportional to how much is happening in my life because a lot of the times it's when I'm busiest that I want to make one to talk about what's happening. And then when I'm not busy, I have the time, so I'll make one. So it's like sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes I'm too busy and I can't do it. Other times something's happening, it's like what do I say? And it's not like it comes and goes with how excited I am about my goals because actually that, that does kind of match it fairly well. I guess it, it waxes and wanes with my enthusiasm for life. So when I'm feeling good, I'm more likely to make one. Basically, if you haven't seen a vlog in a long time, Poncho's having a hard time. Whew. All right, so I'm going to go into... I'm actually, I didn't. I never mentioned it. I'm on, I was on vacation today. I took, for this vacation I went on, I took two days off of work. and One of them was today. It's Tuesday. Uh, and then I got a call at 6, 6.30 tonight. As my boss asking me to get on and do some work, and was like, "Okay, that's just one of the things when you're salaried, they can just call you whenever and be like, hey, bad stuff's happening. We need you to fix it like right now.' And so I'm gonna put in like six hours tonight. Um, I've been waiting for a thing to finish, so I had, I had time to do this. But uh, it's like I'm gonna work like six or seven hours on my day off. It's like hard. It's not even a day off. I think I might take my vacation day back off the calendar." <laughs> <laughs> just be like, no, I, I was here today. I just worked from 6 to 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a meeting at 12.30 after midnight uh, tonight. So it's just, things are better at the job, but stuff like that, working late into the night, still kind of sucks. But that's just being salaried. You know, you have to you have to fix it when it's broken. It doesn't always break it convenient times. So that's just how it goes. I don't, I don't complain about, about that aspect. Uh, that's, just, that's just how it is, working in IT. All right, long video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to give you a tour of the place when this, it's all rearranged, so don't let it bother you that it's all funny and then I have a lamp on the floor. It looks so weird to have a lamp sitting on the floor with such short. I'll see you guys in the next vlog.